So in this video, I'm going to show you perspective plotter, and we're going to grab an image, Alt H, create a mesh, and then for funsies, we're going to go project from view, which looks okay. No, it doesn't. It's like, yeah, I would probably be using proper textures and all this stuff. So once you've downloaded perspective plotter, there is a link in the description, select our camera from here. We're going to go into the camera settings on the right hand side, enable our background images, and we're going to add an image. Let's click open. Go to wherever your image is. There we go. Open image. And then I'm going to press N to bring up the side panel. Let's go all the way down to perspective plotter. There we go. Then from here, we're going to go background unmatched. So now it's going to update the resolution of our camera. So if you have multiple cameras you, and you've got multiple cameras taking photos, you might have to do this individually for each camera each time you go backwards and forwards. So for now, I'm just going to delete the default cube because I don't want it. Up the top right here, perspective plot. Now we've got these lines that we need to line up along the x-axis and the y-axis. Whichever axis you want to do, go nuts. But this image is pretty good. There's lots of lines, parallel lines, which we're trying to take advantage of. So with the red one, oh gosh, I will try and do my best. Uh, that looks pretty good. And let's find another X value here to here. And obviously the closer it is, uh, the better the results will be. Uh, about there you reckon? Yeah, that sounds all right. And then let's go along the Y axis. So I'm going to put one here and here. And then let's grab here and here. There we go. Now, if we want to add in a third axis, we can go up the top for the Z axis. Not going to be too. Yeah. Right. Let's go into third valid configuration. That's fine. That's because I haven't put the blue ones in yet. There we go. These poles should be technically parallel unless the builders are absolutely terrible, which is a possibility. Now I am trying to spread these further out. Um, well, the better further out more apart, the better, but camera warpage starts to become a factor. So especially if you're using an iPhone, you will see around the edges, you get a little bit more stretch. And that's why some people might look a little bit fatter than they actually are. All right, so from here, if I go shift A search, add in a mesh, we can see our ground plane is just there. I only go GZ and technically our ground plane should be flat and it's not, I hate you. I do have a slight feeling that it could be these poles. Let's go back to number two and we'll see what happens. Nope, something else. Let's grab X values and maybe we'll reposition these into a bit of position. There we go. GZ, that lines up a little bit better now with our ground plane. Let's go GY. I'm gonna place it on the corner roughly. Let's select the edge E to extrude Z. There we go. So now this looks like the corner of the wall. I'm going to press G Y. And this is what you're doing from now on for a while is you are not creating a secondary plane anywhere. So I'm not going to go, oh, I'm actually going to start modeling this pillar. Let's add in a cube because now this is not relative to our wall. So let's delete that cube. Let's go delete vertices. I'm going to go G Y or G X, bring that all the way across. Oh, wow. That's actually perfectly aligned. Let's go GY and bring it back. There we go. Now we know that obviously this looks like it's sticking out, which is good. Uh, we actually might come back to that. I'm going to put edge loops in with control R and we are just going to build the scene. So from here, we're going to bring it all the way to the roof and then I'm going to go EZ to extrude all the way to the top. Let's now put an edge loop where this line is and an edge loop where this line starts. Whoops, let's do that one again. Didn't like that. And I'm going to put an edge loop roughly there. Blah. Yeah, cool. Estimation. From here, GG along that axis. A to select all merge by distance. And now I can select probably all this. Or well, actually, let's select this and this. I'm going to press F. Now I'm going to select these edges. E to extrude along the Y axis. And I'm not going to go too far. I'm just going to go to roughly where that is. Let's select that corner piece, come up into item, and we're going to grab the Y value. I'm going to select this edge now with Alt left click, Control V to paste into the Y value. 
So now that these two corners should line up, if I now select all, merge by distance, one vertice here removed, absolutely awesome. Now let's select that edge, not, not everything. There we go, let's just clear that up. And I can go E to extrude Y, and that's gonna follow the roof. So you can see it's fairly close, not 100%, but we've done our best. This line here is following up pretty good. Now we do need to work out the ground plane, so let's grab all the ground stuff now. I'm, oh, actually, no, I lie. We can grab this, E to extrude along the Y axis, sorry, X axis, because we expect this to be 90 degrees, we expect it. Let's do our edge loop when it starts dipping at our corner, roughly there, roughly there, I don't know, there-ish maybe. We could probably grab the value of this minus this and then we work out the same there. Um, but for now I'm not too fussed because we're slapping this together. Let's now go ahead and grab all this. We can go E to extrude along the Y axis and that'll move all the way forward. And then if we want, we can grab both these sides, scale Y zero, enter. Select all merge by uh, M merge by distance. Go back into camera mode. And then let's kind of finish off this ground section. We could go E to extrude along the Y axis, going to roughly the first bit of the curb, E to extrude Y, and now we can kind of follow the curb. Now we're just guesstimating roughly where the curb is gonna be. That sounds pretty good even though there's no noise. Let's just now E to extrude. There we go, nice. We could bring this across to something like that. And let's put an edge loop through here. We can maybe change up the geometry a little bit. We could probably add in a triangle here. Um, if you've got two vertices selected, I can press K. Nope, I can press J and that'll make a cut through there, through any faces. Let's grab I think we might need to just pull this back a little bit. GY, something like that, good enough. And then we can come back in and we'll fix that in a sec. Let's go E to extrude along the Y axis. Might just move these guys across a little bit, GX. And here, I'm gonna round this off manually. Let's do F for a face, right click, subdivide. And then I'm gonna press G, something like that. And then I can press F for a square. Edge loop, edge loop, sure, whatevs. Let's grab that and we'll grab that. E to extrude along the Z, lovely. Let's grab this. E to extrude on the Y axis. And then I'm gonna clear that edge there, EY. Now I just know this from experience, EY. At, uh, there is a roof here. So I'm gonna get EZ, I don't know, that looks good. Let's do this and this, 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 and uh, this and this, F. Let's go F, F. And now you can see how we've built our um, like alleyway. Now the other cool thing what we can do is we can actually select our object, select all, U, project from view, okay? So now when we go into shading and we create a new material, I can now go search, image, bam. Let's go image, whatever. If I now go control T, if we've got Node Wrangler enabled, which is a free add-on, we can see that we've applied a texture to this. It uh, looks a bit funky, that's fine. If we start adding in some extra geometry, it starts cleaning itself up. But now from that angle, we have a nice <laughs> mapped environment for the roof. Hey, caramba. Uh, that's a bit wonky there. If we start adding in a little bit of extra geometry, is that going to clean it up? I think that's just more uh, the texture just being stretched. But you can see along here, this is looking really nice. Even the roof is looking really nice. But you can kind of see very simply how we've taken a photo and we've been able to line up a building. And obviously with a bit of extra work, added geometry, so on and so forth, we can get something looking pretty good.